right, guys, I'm so excited for everybody tonight. Um, so I know we have a lot of new coaches on here. And basically, you know, we're on Gold Diggers, and then above us is Fit Force, which is our big, huge team. And, um, you know, if anybody wants to be added to that team page, you're more than welcome. I just don't do it at the beginning because I don't want you to get overwhelmed. Um, but when you join this team, and, of course, Fit Force was, like, my big team, um, you know Steph Cram. She is like the team MVP. She is like this team. Like, everybody knows who she is. Um, so I'm really excited for you guys to hear from her. And those of you that are coming to Summit, you're just going to see her and you're going to die. She's the cutest little thing. Um, and she's a you know, top coach on Fit4. She's a diamond coach. She's a success club all-star. So for new coaches, that means she's hit it 12 months. Um, but I think, what are you at, like 20? I, yeah. I'll like, be legend come September. September. And she's a full-time working mama of two. So we all can kind of relate to that um, and, you know, the time management and all that kind of stuff. So without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to Steph, and I will mute everybody. But if you have questions, feel free to post it in the chat, um, and we'll do questions at the end. All right? Go ahead, Steph. Take it away. Cool. Well, hey, guys. I'm going to – here, I'm going to see if it will let me share my screen, and I'm hoping that this is going to work pretty well. Can you all see that? Uh-huh. Okay. Is it, if it's too small, like yell at me or snap or something. So thank you so much, Brooke. And like, seriously, Brooke's kind of like that. We all have that person that we look up to and we admire, like, God, I want to be like them when I grow up. So it was so super cool when, when Brooke asked me to jump on here with you guys. So as she said, I am Steph Cram, and this is literally a piece of my life. <laughs> Crazy, hot mess, you guys, like I embraced the phrase fake it till you make it for the longest time because I feel like when you come into especially this business with a certain plan, it never ends up panning out the way that you <laughs> envisioned. So I've been married to my husband, um, Jeremy, for about eight years. Um, a pretty interesting note in case those of you guys have that spouse that's just like sitting back on the sidelines kind of questioning what's going on. I will tell you, he was my hands down biggest naysayer in the very beginning. He was that person that was like, all right, all right. Let's, see, let's see if this is going to stick. And he was, he admitted at one point to wait for the day that I told him, I told you so, because he had himself convinced that this was not going to work. It was not going to be that thing that I was, I was investing all my time in. And um, you guys are actually the first ones to know because I we haven't gone public with it. He's actually quitting his job on Friday, and he what? is going to work this business starting like Monday. <laughs> no way. So yeah, so I I tell that to you guys because um, that was a struggle for the longest time and getting your spouse on board. Um, so it is possible. I have two kids, Emma and Brody. Um, Emma, you see her in the top left here. She's my little stinker. And Brody, man, like when, when we say crazy busy mom, you guys, like he is my mini me attached to my hip. Like that picture, mom, 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 like that's no exaggeration. <laughs> no exaggeration. So today I want to talk to you about getting out of your own way. And I really want to focus this on not just what we do as beach body coaches, but in every other facet of your life. And, um, I think this is something that you'll be pleasantly surprised with. So really quick, what I want you to do is, if you don't already, have a, a piece of paper, something to write with. I promise you we're going to come back to this later on here in the call. But I want you to really think about what is it that holds us back? And you guys, one thing I will tell you, like with, with my team calls and certainly with this too, like I would love for this to be interactive and engaging. So like exercise the heck out of that chat feature. Um, you know, if, if you want to jump in and share a thought, share something here, like I don't want this to necessarily be me preaching and talking to you guys. I want you guys to be able to, to talk back and, and collaborate as well. So this quote here really holds tried and true that it's not who we are that hold us, holds us back. It's who we think that we're not. And we hear all the time about dive into personal development, fix the things that we can improve upon, right? How many of you guys have heard that? Probably a lot of us, you know, what am I, what am I struggling with? And that's what we invest all of our time in. But what I want to challenge you is to shift your mindset and focus on your strengths and punt your weaknesses, because that's, what's going to get you further along 
not only in this business, but in other pieces of your life as well. So I want you to sit back and if you have a pen and paper to write with, I want you to take a couple minutes and maybe write the top three to five things that holds you back. Who do you think that you're not? What do you think that you are weak at? And, and take a moment and write these down. We're going to circle back with these here in just a minute. And while you guys are doing this, I'm seeing if there's a way for me to like see everybody while I'm still sharing my screen. I don't know if I can. I don't know if you can either, but you can go. I know. Because I love seeing all of your faces. I know. Especially if I say something that's completely whack to like <laughs> be able to read you guys like, Steph, what are you doing? <laughs> So does everyone have at least three to five things that they, that you either tell yourself that you are not, whether you're not good enough, you're, you're not strong in this area. Does everyone have their three to five? Like, give me a thumbs up. Cool. And if you're still working on it, that's okay. I don't, I don't want to rush it. I promise. Like we're, we're going to cover quite a bit of ground and we're still going to have plenty of time for some Q and A because I want to jam out with you guys afterwards. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. While you're still finishing up with your list, I wanna talk to you about this weakness fixing. Because a lot of times, you know, and, and I can tell you working in corporate America, this is like a, a sickness. And it's really easy to dive into this as well within coaching because like I said, we're always focused on diving into that personal development that's going to fix the things that we need to improve upon. And so it's just taking that mental shift. So there's a couple assumptions that we all make that truthfully are completely wrong. We have it all backwards. So necessarily like all behaviors can be learned. How many of you have said at any point, any of these three things, if you, try, if I try hard enough, I can do it. Or if I want it badly enough, I can do it. If I dream it, I can achieve it. Have you, have you said that to yourself? Those of us with, with kids, have we said this to our kids mm -hmm. all the time? Now I don't want to mislead and tell you like, this is wrong and this is bananas. But here's the thing, we all have wonderful ideas. The problem is actually executing and acting upon them. So, you know, Emma's seven years old and I tell her all the time, baby girl, you can do whatever it is that you wanna do. And she can sit back and she can dream and she can cast that vision in her own mind. But unless she's willing to step up and do something about it, it's just a thought. So I want that to really sink in, you guys. All behaviors can be learned, yes, but that doesn't equal success. Um, another thing, you guys, the best in a role, um, the best in a role all get there exactly the same way. So if we look at people like a Brandy Botts, like a Mindy Wedner, like a Janelle Summers, um, any of the top 10 coaches, they all, they all must have done the same thing. There's like that magic secret sauce, right? No, totally wrong. And this is what I want to talk to you guys about. What all successful people do is they figure out what they're good at and they capitalize on that. And that's what I want to help you guys to figure out in this call. And the other thing is weakness fixing leads to success. What we just talked about, dive into that personal development, fix the things that you struggle with. And so let's take all of our energy. Let's dive into there. Meanwhile, you've got these strengths that only you possess that are sitting there not being exercised. You see what I'm saying? Okay. And you guys, if there's questions or anything along the way, like ping or jump in, unmute yourself, like dive in because I want to be able to, to help you have that like aha moment. So let's focus on our strengths. So we've got a set of, of wrong assumptions, things that like a lot of those cliche words and things that people throw out there, but it's not really the right way to look at things. So let's focus on what we should be focus looking at. Some behaviors can be learned, yes, but many are nearly impossible to learn. There is a difference between talents, skills, and knowledge. So you guys, here's the thing. It's like taking a star athlete and they have this gift, they have this strength to play, let's say a certain sport or to play, let's say defense. But if they're not put in a position where they're exercising their strength, their talent is not being utilized. 
They're simply a member of the team. Do you see what I'm saying? So there is that difference between having the information and having that knowledge and then being able to execute that. Number two, the best in a role, um, the person who's best in a role delivers the same outcome, but they use different behaviors. What do I mean by this? So let's look at any one of you guys here on the team, even you know, those of you that are diamond leaders. You're all, you're all leaders. You're all the same rank, but I am willing to bet you, like I see Susie and Kristen on here, I am willing to bet that every single one of you guys has different behaviors on what makes you unique. What got you to that level of success in your business? What helps you connect and develop your leaders? So you may have that same outcome. You may have crossed that same finish line, but you got there at different paces. You got there because of your own strengths. You feel what I'm saying? So the next thing here, weakness fixing prevents failure. We're going to talk a little bit more about this because this may not, like some of you may be like, all right, Steph, I don't know what this means. <laughs> Hang in there with me. Um, weakness fixing prevents failure. Strengths development leads to excellence. If we spend all of our time and we focus on the things that we need to improve upon, the things that we are weak, what we are doing is we are setting ourselves up to avoid failing. If we know that we suck, like you guys, can I just be real with you? I suck so much at so many different things. And the reason that I may spend time and learning how to um, maybe better manage my time or to um, like that mentality of fake it till you make it is because I don't want to fail versus taking a step back and going, what am I really kick ass and doing and do more of that instead of focusing on the things that you're weak with. Okay, so here's a little exercise that I want you guys to do. That pen and paper that you have broken out, I want you to get it, okay? What I'm gonna challenge you guys to do is you are gonna write this phrase, I love my strengths, three times. Now, before you do it, if you are right-handed, take that writing utensil, put it in your left hand. If you are left-handed, put it in your right hand. So you are doing this with your weak hand, not the hand that you typically write with. Now, couple rules. Love cannot be replaced by a heart sign. <laughs> you, do, you do not have to write the quotes. <laughs> you do not have to write the quotes. This has to be legible, okay? So on the count of three, write it with your opposite writing hand. Write this phrase three times. One, two, three, when you're done, give me a thumbs up so I know you're done. It kind of sucks, doesn't it? <laughs> I want to see Kristen's. Kristen and I have handwriting competitions in real life, so I'm curious about them. Dude, that's awesome. <laughs> I'm not going to lie, you guys, when I did this, I was like, oh my God, I write worse than my five-year-old. This is bad. All right, Brooke, let's see it. <laughs> All right, guys. You're who's, brave enough, who's brave enough to hold him up so he can like, <laughs> so we can see? Oh, yours is way better. <laughs> Holy cow! Yours is good. Wow, well, that's good. yeah, that's actually legible. You can't even read mine. Mine's like chicken yeah. scratch over here. Well, you, guys are, you guys are doing good. So let me ask you this: When I first told you, all right, write this three times before I gave those conditions, some of you guys are probably like, "Dude, what are you doing? This is easy." right? But the second I changed it up and I told you, you're doing this with your weak hand. How did it make you feel when you were going through and actually writing it out? Like, feel welcome to unmute yourself. Annoyed. Annoyed. Yeah. Frustrated. <laughs> yeah. Frustrated. Slow. <laughs> <laughs> did anyone feel super anxious? at all I did yeah 
I wanted it to be neat. Yes. <laughs> Are you a perfectionist? It depends on it. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Okay, you guys, now let's go back again with your regular writing hand, and we're going to do the same exercise. You're going to write this phrase three times. Ready? Go. Yep. Much easier, right? Much more within our comfort zone, for sure. How did that make you feel? After going through what you just went through, how did it make you feel to kind of pick back up with your normal writing hand and just write that out? Confident. <laughs> Confident, yeah. It was easier. Right? Like, let's just be honest. It was flat out easier. It looks good. It feels good. You can, you can hustle through it a little bit faster versus like, you guys, I'm not going to lie when I, cause I even did this too. When you do it with your, with your weak hand, it's almost like you're going much slower. You're not accomplishing as much, right? You're kind of holding yourself back because you're focusing so much on this is not my strong hand. It's got, I've got to make that damn S go the right way. Like, so you guys, that's what I, I, I want to highlight on that because again, I want you to think about when you are writing with that weak hand, none of us, unless you're ambidextrous, is that the word? Like most of us are not comfortable when we are writing. Like, and if I said, I will pay you an entire week's earning of what you make as a coach, or if you work a full-time job to write all day long, with that we can, some of you would probably be like, Steph, go to hell. <laughs> you know, because we don't want to fail. It feels uncomfortable. It feels unnatural. It feels frustrating. It gives us anxiety because it's not where our strengths lie. Pursuing excellence, writing that phrase with your strong hand felt like you accomplished something. It gave you confidence. It was easier in contrast to using your weakness, right? This is that mental shift that I really want to hone in on with you guys. And by all means, I'm, you guys, I am a lifelong learner. I'm not telling you to ignore your weaknesses and just brush them under the rug, but what I'm telling you to do is focus on your strengths. Don't try and learn how to write with that weak hand, honey, if you know that your right hand's working just fine. Focus on your strengths. So let's, let's talk about this here. Let's, let's apply this now into our business and what we do as coaches. Um, any of you guys, and just out of curiosity, um, Brooke, I don't know if, if you've probably done this too. It, do any of you guys, ha are you working full-time now or have you worked in corporate America previously? I have any of you? Everybody's. Awesome. Has any, have any of you guys done the strengths finders? Yes. Is there anyone that's like, stuff what are you talking about? <laughs> so for those of you guys that are not familiar, because I'm looking through and I'm seeing a couple looks like, I don't know. Um, so what this is, you guys, it's a series of tests that um, Gallup, who is, they're kind of like a, a third party administrative firm. We do them. I work for Cardinal Health here in Columbus, you guys. And so this is, this is an assessment that's done to not identify what your weaknesses are, but this is something that will identify out of 34 characteristics, what your top five to 10 strengths are and what your, not weaknesses, but your bottom five to 10 strengths are. And with these, it's, it's something that, you know, we use in, in our corporate world pretty frequently to make sure, are you in a position where you're using your strengths effectively? And hands down, this applies to what we do as coaches, because you guys know whether it's one of the, the four vital behaviors or whether it's something that you need to do in developing your team, there is something that is either going to give you a lot of energy or there's something that is going to drain your energy. So I would love an opportunity, like especially Brooke, if you're cool with this too, to open the forum up and to hear from you guys um, 
And, and you can even, you guys, I'm a hand talker if you haven't noticed. So like what gives me a lot of energy and what really drains me of my energy? And I want to hear from you if you could pick those activities and what you do in your day-to-day -day as a coach, the things that maybe you know is supposed to, to help you build that momentum, build your business, but it just sucks living life out of you. I would love for everybody to, to kind of share a little bit what gives you a lot of energy in your business, what drains you of your energy. So I don't know if we have anyone brave to go first. Do you want to unshare it so that everybody shows up on your screen? Oh, yes. Stop share. There you go. Yay! Now I can see you guys. I will share stuff. Um, <clears throat> I don't know if this is you, what you want, so bear with me. So I think one thing that, that gives me lots of energy is obviously working out. Um, I try to do it in the morning so I can be good to go. Um, and then one thing that really drains me is excuses and excuses from other people, whether it's my coaches on my team or it's my challengers or potentials. Um, and I know we go for no, and that's like really uplifting, but I think like one thing that really drains me is just that overall excuses. And I guess it's more so from coaches and I know Brooke and other people on this call can relate, but I think, is that what you're kind of looking for? Yep. Yep. Okay. And you guys, what I encourage you to do is just like how we went back and, and I encourage you to write down, um, you know, some of those things earlier in the call, jot these down because I, I, I'm willing to guarantee this is going to be something you're going to come back to when we look at your daily checklist and those things that may be like that frog that you need to eat. But I think this, this might help you to, to kind of figure out a better process too. So no, honestly, Susie, that was, that's perfect. That is perfect. Anybody else? Um, something that gives me energy is like success, like signing up a new coach or getting a new challenger or hitting success club. Something like that gives me the energy. And it's kind of like once you see results, you, you know, you're addicted. Um, and same thing with losing 10 pounds. That gives me more energy to keep on going. <laughs> um, and then I'm with Susie. Excuses really are hard for me. I want it so bad for everybody. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. <laughs> so that's hard. Yeah, it is. it is hard. It is hard. It's that mama bear syndrome. Yeah. That's all it is. And you guys, I will tell you to give you some confidence. Like there is no right or wrong answer. And I want you to know, like, this is a safe zone to feel like, okay, if I share this, like, ain't nobody holding this over your head. <laughs> You know, this, sometimes it's really good to be able to, to reach out because there may be a fellow sister on the team that has the same energy that builds them up just as much as they have something that drains them. And this is also a good opportunity, too, for you guys to be able to maybe learn something different about each other. And, um, you know, let's say you have that fellow sister that, oh, my God, dude, that drains you, too. Maybe we can brainstorm on how we can alleviate some of that. You know what I mean? So please feel welcome to like safe zone and share. And I'll tell you my mom, but not until like everybody shared. <laughs> I'll go next. Hi. Hello, girl. <laughs> um, okay. So I think one of the things that gives me energy is like seeing new leaders emerge on my team, seeing people like kind of come into their own as a coach, which is really cool. Cause it's like, we have these little babies and then they start to do things on their own. And it's, that is like the best, I think, um, being a leader and then, um, draining my energy. Um, maybe like work life balance, just trying to kind of find that thing that is not good for like, that's good for longer than like three or four weeks. And then a new pattern kind of emerges. Mm -hmm. Does anybody else struggle with that too? Like would does anybody else agree that kind of drains them too? Just finding that balance. I'll admit. <laughs> so here's, here's something that I want you guys to think in, and I want you to take this with a grain of salt because like, I'll be, I'll be really, really honest with you guys. Like who, who cares what I think, right? At the end of the day, nobody cares what I think, but I do believe that if you are, you know, also someone and you're working that eight to five, nine to six hustle, and you're wanting this to really develop 
and, and become something that's successful. Um, I think one of the biggest mistakes that I made early on was that idea of I need to find balance because we hear that all the time. But when you think of balance and you look at a scale, it's equal, right? So it's almost like balance is no different than things staying the same because nothing's tipping that scale. So you've got to do something a little bit drastic on one end or the other to start seeing a shift in that. And I want you to know that that is okay because, again, that shift is just going to be temporary until you hit maybe one goal and then it's going to plateau out and then there's going to be another shift. And so, you guys, my, I mean, probably still to this day, I get up at 5 a.m., I get my workout in because otherwise it ain't going to happen. And then I work my eight to five hustle. I come home, have dinner, kiss the kids, get their stinky butts washed and get to bed. And then my eyes bleed until 1 a.m. in the morning because I know that that's what I have to do. So that idea of balance, I'm, I'm balancing my time with my family, but it's, it's going to kind of be like this because I have to earn that privilege to be able to say, that life by design, that life by design. It's not easy, you guys, but are just like in our own health and fitness journey, are you willing to do those? Are you willing to live right now like no one else? So three to five years from now, you can live like no one else. You know what I mean? I will take my double shot of Energize in the morning so I can bleed from my eyes when I wake up in the morning to do my workout, but it's because I know that this time next year, I won't be hustling that hard. So Kristen, that was, that was like an awesome point, girlfriend. I left you a love note in the chat. <laughs> you guys are so freaking amazing. I love you. I love you all. Anybody else? Courtney, Megan, anybody? Candice? <laughs> you guys all are like, no, she did not call me. <laughs> <laughs> You guys, I, I promise I'm like loud and obnoxious and a little bit of a peacock, but I promise you, like I'm, 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 I ain't gonna bite your head off. <laughs> I really struggle with just inviting people power hour stuff that scares me and drains me. Mm -hmm. um, just because I get so excited about like a sale, like selling something to help them. And then I'm like all excited. Then I realize I need to get more people and help more people. And then that's like, oh, then I have to go start all, all over again with just power hour stuff just kind of is my hardest part right now. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Does anybody else feel that way too? Like, um, like that's the biggest frog, the biggest, like nastiest, slimiest, stinkiest toad that you know that you have to eat every day. And it's like, dude, I don't want to do that. Don't make me do that. How many, um, and, and just out of curiosity, Julie, and I'd, I'd love for anybody else to jump in too, like, do you have a certain number of people that like, today, I'm going to reach out to X number of people, like that consistent, do you have a certain number that you're shooting for? Well, no, it's my own fault. I mean, I'm just kind of randomly like, I'll do a power hour tonight, or I won't do one for four days, and then I'll do another one. And, and you know, normally when I do it, I, it it is successful. I get, I might not make a sale, but I get people that are really interested. So, um, yeah. really it's lack of planning on my part, like not, not making the time for it. So it's, it's my own issue, but I just need to get over that, I guess, and just yeah. schedule it. So why is it draining for you? I think cause I don't schedule it. Then I get stressed that I didn't schedule it. Then I didn't do it. And then it just snowballs. But, um, I think, like you said, you get up at 5 a.m. Like, I don't do that. So if I want to be successful, I need to make a change. So, Yeah. You guys, and, and honestly, Julie, you are so courageous and brave for, like, owning up to that. I'll be honest with you. Like, don't think the flashy title and the time that I've been chugging along at this, too. Like, I don't love it. I don't love it any more than you do. But here's something that I really want you guys um, to think about. And I'll, I'll share with you a little personal story. Um, I am not a runner at all, like physically running. I don't run. Um, after high school graduation, I was actually in a really bad car accident and I broke both of my legs. And to this day, I still have metal rods and screws 
and my left femur and my right tibia to hold the, the bones together. Like they didn't cast me. And so when my sister, well, let me back up a little bit. When I was in college and I cheered and they were like, all right, practice hadn't even started yet. We're going to run four miles every Tuesday and Thursday. I was bitter Betty and I hated it because it was a weakness of mine. I knew it wasn't good. I couldn't keep up. So when my sister last year had this genius idea that we were going to sign up and we were going to do together the Disney princess glass slipper challenge, which if you guys are not familiar, this shit is bananas. It's a 5k, a 10k and a half marathon back to back. I don't run. <laughs> and the winters here in Columbus, Ohio, were not nice this year. So guess who did not train? This girl right here. And I had someone that gave me the best advice that I, like this was my lifeline when we were running the sucker. <laughs> and it's something that I've applied in my business and I teach my coaches to do this too. And, you know, Julie, this is definitely for you and, and certainly anybody else too that kind of feels like, um, you struggle with the same thing as it relates to inviting in your power hour. I want you to look at this like a marathon as opposed to trying to sprint up a hill. Because if you have the stamina and you have the lung capacity to sprint like a crazy lady, like Channing Tatum is waiting for you at the top of that mountain and keep that pace the entire way and be consistent with it, you're going to blow everybody out of the water. But most normal people cannot keep that pace long term. So I want you to look at this like there's no overnight success in this business. This is all about time, consistency, and patience. So I want you to look at this and how you structure your power hour and inviting the exact same way that you would a marathon. So you guys, honest to God, I will tell you, the 5K, I'm like, this is a warm up. I got this. I can do that. Came time for the 10K and I was like, I just need to keep figure, like, figure out my breath, get my jams plugged into my ear and I'm good. But when it came time for that half marathon, you guys, I knew, because it's a mental game, this, this all is a mental game. I knew that if I let my adrenaline suck me up and I was like, I'm gonna get a quick start, I would die. Like I would need to be grabbing for an inhaler that I don't have come mile three and I was not gonna finish the, the rest of the, the race. So instead, figure out a pace regardless of how fast or how slow that you can maintain without quitting. And what's going to happen, like you guys, I'm just going to be real with you. The reason that I'm still a diamond coach is I'm still trying to develop my coaches. But when you look at my volume, it is bananas. My volume is ridiculous. So when I do rank advance, I have created kind of on accident, this ridiculous foundation that I'm going to have that stability. You guys, I am a turtle faked in a, in a, what is it? In a rabbit's clothing. I'm not the fastest. I'm not going to be that coach, that leader that's going to shoot from diamond to freaking nine star in a year. You know, I've been sitting at diamond for 14 months now but I'm still growing, I'm still developing. So I want you to take that same approach with your power hour. If that means all you can do every single day is reach out to three people, reach out to those three people consistently every day instead of I'm gonna sit back on Saturday and I'm gonna blast 50 people and then I haven't talked to anybody in five days because that's gonna be the sprint up the mountain. You see what I'm saying? That, if you can do that, that's amazing, but chances are that's going to be exhausting. And I would tell you the same thing too, if you're trying to, to reach out to 10, 15, 20 people every flipping day, you're my hero and I want to be like you when I grow up, but that is exhausting. You see what I'm saying? So figure out for you what that magic number is. And as long as you are doing that consistently, you're still going to be building people into your funnel and into your pipeline. So you're always going to have those conversations. It may take a little bit, but when everyone else, when those sprinters are starting to slow down because they've ran out of breath, because their energizes worn off, 
you're still good. You see what I'm saying? So figure out what that magic number is for you. It's going to be different for everybody. But figure out what that magic number is and stick to that. That will be your strength. So, Julie, thank you. That was awesome point, girl. I promise you, you are not alone. I got a team of coaches that are right there with you. <laughs> Anybody else want to share? So I'll, t I'll tell you guys, because I want to open it up for some, some Q&A. That's probably my most favorite thing with doing with, with team calls is giving you guys a chance to ask questions and engage together. Um, for me, you guys, I, the thing that gives me energy, you know, I can sit back and say um, it's, it's those transformation posts when I can look back at, you know, my post baby mama body and look at where I am now. But realistically, what fuels me and gives me energy are those messages that I get from people that said, I doubted myself and you believed in me more than I believed in me. So that ability to cast vision and for other people to see that potential that they didn't even realize had, that's what gets me out of bed in the morning. And equally, like I know Susie and, and Kristen, you guys said this too, um, probably the thing that, that holds me up. So when I did my strengths finders test, my number one is I'm very futuristic. Like when you talk about casting that vision, vision, casting that belief in people, like that's my strength, hands down. My weakness is more of like, um, it's called intelligence, which kind of sounds like ain't a lot of screws up here, but that's not really what it means. It means that I don't rely on systems. I don't believe in like, or not believe, but I don't necessarily hold try and true to those systems in a book. So some of you guys that are frustrated, you feel like it drains you because people, they're like, they're learning, but they're, they're not lifelong learners. They're lifelong hoarders. They're not executing. That's, that's <clears throat> like, I'm such a doer that I'm like, you're doing all these trainings. You're doing all this stuff. Like, why aren't you doing like, why just do, just do it. That bugs me. So the reason that I ask you guys to identify what gives you energy versus what drains your energy is because those things that give you energy, do more of that. All of your energy, all of, all of the stuff that you do in your business to help drive you forward, do more of that. And the things that are draining your energy, what I'm going to challenge you to do is think of how can you delegate it so you don't have to do it have someone else do it um, or how can you maybe look at what you're currently doing and improve the process a little bit? How can you tweak it so it's not being such an energy sucker? You know, and I'll tell you for me, that was really hard to do because it's like, I like, I need to mama bear my coaches that are saying they want this and they're not executing. They're not showing up. They're not doing it. I had to give myself permission and grace and I, and you guys feel welcome to steal this and use this with your team too. I actually started telling my new coaches, I started telling my team, I will be your energize. I will be your recover, but I cannot make you show up and do the workouts and I cannot make you do the meal plan. You see what I'm saying? We can be their cheerleader. We can be there to help build them up when they've been knocked down and, and coach them through. We can give them all the training in the world. But if you don't show up and push play every day, and if you don't follow that meal plan, guess what? You're not going to see results. That was a huge weight lifted off of my shoulder because I didn't feel like I needed to fix them. And what it did, it delegated that responsibility from me onto them. Because if they don't show up, like, I love you. I'm not mad at you, but I'm going to still go out and find more people who are willing to show up. You see what I'm saying? So... Brooke, if it's, if it's cool with you, I don't know how much time you have left with everyone, but I'd, I'd love to open it up if anybody's got questions or. Yeah, I would love to do that. And um, just out of curiosity, on your strengths, was public speaking one of them? No. It's not an option, though. <laughs> I feel like I could just listen to you, like, forever. <laughs> Dude, this is what I live for. You're really, really good. Oh, thank you. And bringing it all, like, full circle. <laughs> 
Thank you, thank you. Uh, but I love, love, love. Thank you so much, Julie, for asking that question because I love that you said to pick the consistency that works for you. That's really, really important because consistency is the name of the game. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah, no, I, questions and answers would be great. Do you have a couple of minutes? And you guys, and I say consistency too because, you know, believe me, I, I think one of the things that I struggled so much with is having, and, and trust me, I have stay-at-home mama envy like – you guys hear me? I want to be like them when I grew up too. But it was so hard for me as a coach that wanted this to knowing that I was so limited with my time and having someone that did not relate, could not connect with the struggles that I was facing to tell me, here's the number that you need to be inviting to. And I'm like, I don't know if I can do that every day. So it took me a while to step back and figure out what my strength and what I knew that I could commit to every day. Yeah, that's really, really smart because everybody has their own thing going on. So mm -hmm. what questions do you guys have? Keep her talking. I want to keep listening. Okay, don't, don't be easy on me. Let me have it. <laughs> I have a question. Yeah. So after you get your kids to sleep and you say you, you work until one, what, what do you do? And I know yeah. that's like a broad question, but like, yeah, what do you do? So, um, true story, I, how I have my day structured, and I'll, I'll explain it this way. So when I get up bright and shiny in the morning, um, my alarm normally goes off at 4.30 a.m. I get up, I dive into some sort of devotional. I don't do my personal development normally at that time because I'm not awake yet, um, but I'll dive into some sort of truth and I do affirmations every day. And then I normally spend a little bit of time with my husband because he has to leave by like 5, 5.15 in the morning, at least for the next couple of days to get his job. Um, and then I immediately go downstairs, I get my workout in, and I, every single day, I go live in my challenge group that I have going on, and I do that at the end of all of my workouts. So A, it lets them know that I've shown up. I've gotten my sweat on. I'm normally sharing something with them to start their day right. And I still have posts that I have scheduled um, ahead of time, but I, I always go live in my challenge groups then. So um, the next thing that I do is I, I get ready for my work day. I get the kids packed up, out to work. My lunch hour is when I commit to my power hour. So all that I'm doing is I'm inviting. For me, my magic number is five. So I'm inviting five people to my next challenge group to my next coaching sneak peek. Um, I connect with five people and I keep, I track all of my conversations in like a Google doc spreadsheet. So I follow up with five people at least, and then I put it away. So I'm not responding to messages. I'm not planning or doing anything. I'm simply focusing on my, my power of five. <laughs> and then I finish the second half of my, my hustle. And then from the drive, leaving work from about 5 to 5.30, this is when I'm sending messages. Um, I do a lot of voice messages on Messenger because A, it's easier to do, and it's normally more fun to hear people's voice. So in that short window, I'll follow up with a lot of people, whether it's my coaches or customers that have random questions. Um, I've made it a personal policy and for me that from 5.30 until about 8.30, that's my family time. So if you see a post from me on Facebook, it's scheduled. You know, I'm not on social media. I'm not doing anything because that was another struggle too was I was constantly, every ding of my phone, I was like, I'm going to miss an opportunity. I'm going to miss an opportunity. And I quickly forgot the whole reason why I'm doing this is to spend more time with my kids, mm -hmm. to spend more time with my family. So I'm spiting my why in spite of my why. So finally I was like, it can wait. If you need me, you can wait until nine o'clock, <laughs> you know? So um, once the babies go to bed from literally nine o'clock, and I'll be honest, some mornings it's not that late. Sometimes I just have enough going on where I get to bed by 10, 1030, and it's no big deal. Um, the other thing that I will tell you guys is if you have that significant other or that spouse, make time for them. Like I tell my team, I think last team call, Brooke, that you were on was the only one because I only had two people <laughs> and they wouldn't have got it. But normally at the end of every single team call I have is I'm like, go have sex with your husband <laughs> because you have to have time 
for your spouse. If not, they resent you. So I get the kids to bed. I spend time with Big Cram. And then what I do is I follow up on all my messages. I, <laughs> that sounded real bad, didn't it? <laughs> Only because of your previous comment. <laughs> what about Little Cram? <laughs> well, that's another call. That's another call. Oh, God, Kristen, I love you. So, um, but what I do, like, during that remaining time, you guys see, this is what makes us so fun. We're all, we're all crazy. We're, we're crazy. So, but I, I follow up with any messages that I didn't tackle in that short half hour that I, on my drive back to picking up the kids. Um, I also start planning ahead what I'm going to do. Um, you guys, I have my monthly calendar strategically placed. So I know what's coming up a month ahead. And so I use this time to bit by bit start planning things for those things coming up the following month, whether it's getting my posts, um, the content created, whether it's um, updating things for my coach trainings or whether it's going back to my Excel spreadsheet and, oh my gosh, I didn't follow up with this person I needed to and like blasting them that night. Or um, I'll even schedule some of my call to action posts. Like I'll write out some of the content so that way I'm not having to like scramble last minute and go, oh my God, I didn't post that business opportunity on Sunday night. This is when I start doing it because it's quiet. I can just focus and, and chill. And honestly, this is normally when I do my personal development is, is right before I go to bed. And it's, it's always fresh for me. Um, so that's honestly what I do. Awesome. Thanks. Yeah. Oh my God, you guys are never going to let me live that down. Or Jeremy, when he comes to somebody there, that's going to be bad. <laughs> so what's he going to do? He's going to like actively coach and everything? He's, um, he is. So he is actually, he's going to finish a program. Wow. That hasn't been done yet. <laughs> and there's, um, there's going to be some things that are going to come off of my assistant's plate. Um, she is like phenomenal with like the creative side of things. Um, whereas he can do a lot of things like on the administrative side. And I talked to, I've talked to a couple other like, um, couples that run the business together. And instead of looking at it, like you run your business, I run my business. That's normally how they do it. Like one is always kind of like the voice, the face, the one leading the charge. And the other one is kind of doing all of the behind the scenes stuff that are keeping the gears turning. So we're, talking about our strengths, you guys, like that's what we're trying to figure out. Cause my husband is like, he's awesome at building relationships with people. And I think because I've been in corporate recruiting for the past 12 years, like people kind of suck. <laughs> I don't want to talk to them. <laughs> so we're, we're trying to figure it out. That's awesome. Congratulations. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Anyone else? Oh, there's something in the chat. Heather. <laughs> oh, to be my assistant. Start, start making a list. And honestly, this all came from when I was talking, when we were talking about what gives you energy, what drains your energy. Those things that drain your energy, like if you're someone that, um, any of you guys that, if you're on Instagram and you're trying to build your network through Instagram, um, a lot of times sending out those introductory messages to try and connect with someone. Like if you've done Josh Coates's art of recruiting calls it like it's the ADOS system to try and ADOS the hell out of people all day. That's exhausting. You're not always going to get that return on investment. So something like that, you can have your assistant do plant the seed. Big Cram's going to learn how to use social media because he, he don't know how to use it right now, but they can plant the seed and that's all that they're, they're planting the seed. You come in and water it. You're harvesting that crop. That's so awesome. think of those things that drain you and that'll start creating your, your to-do list. Cool. That was really, really awesome, okay. Steph. Yeah, you're welcome. You guys, if there's any other, it, this happens to me all the time. Like I'll get off of a call or I'll get off of a training and things like come to me in the middle of the night or like, in the shower while you're having an American Idol session and you're like, Oh my God, why didn't I ask that question? 
So always, you guys feel welcome to reach out and, and ask if something comes up. Like we are all part of the same family. I don't care who your mama, your grandmama coaches, like we're all in this to see each other succeed. So if there's anything I can do to, to help you at all, feel welcome to pick my brain. Awesome. Any questions going once, going twice? All right. Thank you so much, girl. Yeah. Thank you. 30 days. I know. <laughs> I know. I can't believe it. That's so exciting. So exciting. Everybody, who's who's going to summit from the crew that's on here? Yes. yes. Those of you guys not that's don't feel bad. My I signed up May 2014. I didn't go to summit my first year either. And in part because I was like, I don't know what this is. I'm not going. Getting married. <gasps> Mandy girl, that's a good excuse. You you were at, if you were anywhere close, I'd be like, what's the matter with you? <laughs> Congratulations, though. Send lots of pictures so we can love on you. Um, but no, for sure, you guys, definitely make it a point to be there next year. Um, I so arrogantly sat back and I'm like, what, what the heck makes this thing so amazing? Like, it's changing everyone's business. And last year when I went, like, I got it. I totally got it. So if you're not going this year, don't beat yourself up over it. Just think you've got a whole other year to make a lot of magic happen. And next year is going to be freaking amazing when you go. Oh, yay. Cool. Yeah, thanks for having me, guys. Thank you so much for taking time out of your, your life to join us and give us all yeah. those awesome nuggets. You, Anytime. You build my paper. <laughs> yay. Anytime, girls. All right. Bye-bye.